So what does a good disaster plan look like? Well, first of all, it's comprehensive. As we said earlier, your plan needs to incorporate a broad view of your institution, looking not only at its internal vulnerabilities, but also at the wider environment in which it exists. Similarly, you'll want to include both the internal and external resources you can draw on in the event of an emergency. A good plan has to be flexible. Whether an incident takes place during the middle of a staff meeting when every key person is in the building, or late one night when the director is out of town and the only person around is a security guard, your plan should point the way to an effective response to the situation. One size definitely will not fit all. You won't respond to a leaky pipe the same way you do to a major fire. Your plan should enable you to cover both extremes and everything in between. A lot of sophisticated thought goes into a disaster plan, but the final document should be so clear that it can be understood by anyone who can read. Now imagine this situation. It's a stormy night and a tree falls on your building. Rain is pouring in, and the only one around is the new maintenance person. Will that person be able to find the emergency numbers when they pull out the disaster plan? When the fire department arrives, will they be able to find the electrical shutoffs? You have several thousand square feet of waterproof plastic sheeting on hand. Will the person reading your plan be able to find it? You may have ample time to draw up the plan, but there's going to be a lot less time to read it. Personnel change. New collections are donated. Existing collections are loaned out. Buildings are renovated. As a result of this, you need to regularly review the plan and be sure it's up to date. Our hope is that either we or the institution will be in touch with each other each time um, that there's a change in, in the makeup of, of that relationship, whether it's a, cha a change on their behalf or a change on ours. We like to sit down at least annually, at least once a year, and just review the plan with each other. Relationships are so important and developing and maintaining relationships between um, cultural institutions and the emergency management people, whether it's police, fire, uh, medical, I think will, will determine how successful you are in a time of crisis. Now when your plan is ready, make numerous copies and make sure people know where they're located. Keep at least one copy off-site and when you revise the plan, be sure to update all the copies. When Adams National Historical Park was burglarized, the staff immediately turned to their plan. The emergency plan is, is a wonderful tool, um, besides just being a planning document, because it should be kept as an active document, it becomes something to refer to always, whether you're evaluating a situation that might happen or responding to a situation where you do need quick reference to freeze trucks or you know paper suppliers or you know whatever you need at that moment you feel that you know there's a tool that you can count on and it might not give you all the answers but it is something that you should be familiar with and, and should be your first reaction to at least get started with the process.